Hello and welcome. In this presentation, we will be looking at the probability of multiple events and we will be using a tree diagram. Consider this problem. Okay. Leon spins a four colored spinner and whoops then tosses a two-sided coin. Calculate the probability he spins yellow followed by a tail. As you can gather, there are two events here. One event is spinning a spinner and we want to land on the yellow. And the other one is tossing a coin and we wish to land on a tail. So let's have a look at a little bit of terminology. Now, well, a tree diagram, and we'll be drawing a tree diagram in a minute, is a good way to represent the sample space when there are multiple events. Well, as already I've already mentioned, we have two events. One is spinning the spinner. The other one, tossing a coin. And those two are events because they are things that we'll actually do. We also have what's referred to as a sample space. Now, a sample space is a list of all the different outcomes. In other words, a list of all the different results that we can have. And you'll get to see that in a minute. So, so back to the question, just to refresh, Leon is going to spin a four colored spinner and then a two toss a two sided coin. And we want to know the probability of a yellow spin followed by a tail. So, so just make that a little bit bigger. So I have more space. So in other words, written, I suppose, in math speak. I want to calculate the probability he spins a yellow followed by the toss of a coin, which is a head. So I have perhaps three key milestones here. The first one is where I start. Then I have the first event. The first event will be that of spinning a spinner. Yeah. With the spinning of the spinner, I can have either the options of red, yellow, green, or blue. And if, for instance, I just wanted to work out the probability of landing on a yellow without considering the tossing of the coin, I would say that would be simply there's one yellow out of, there's one, two, three, four different colors you could land on. However, we have a second event to consider. That event is tossing the coin. And when I toss the coin, I could consider that I have either a head or a tail. So for instance, I might spin the spinner and land on a red and toss a coin and land on a head. Or spin the spinner with a red, toss the coin and land on a tail. And that sequence is followed all the way through from spinning the spinner and landing on a blue followed by tossing the co coin and landing on a tail. So you could say these here, these lines here, are all the branches in my tree diagram. I list my events and I look at all the combinations for all the branches. And what I'll end up with is what's referred to as a sample space. It's a list of all the outcomes. So you can see here, red, followed by head, red followed by tail, all the way through to blue followed by tail. So far, so, so good. So what I need to do to calculate the probability of a yellow followed by a head, 
I need to go along here and find out how many yellows followed by heads that I have. And you can see there's one here, and that's it from my list. So, I can say that the probability of a yellow followed by a head is one out of eight. Well, eight is the number of outcomes in my sample space. Okay, what about if I was looking at a blue followed by a tail? Well, let's just... Same situation again. I would look here to see how of all these outcomes in which there are eight, how many are blue followed by a tail? And you can see here, there is one. So again, similar answer, one out of eight or one eighth. What about if I was looking at the probability of only spinning a red? Well, here, over here are all my outcomes and of all these eight outcomes, how many of those are just red? I'm not interested in the head or the tail anymore, just the color red. Well, there's one here, there's one there, that's it. So, there you can see, my answer would be two eighths, which can be simplified to one quarter if you wish. Looking at the next one, what about the probability of a tail? Again, I'll just populate all this. So, how many outcomes do I have? I have a total of eight outcomes. And of those outcomes, how many tails do I have? Well, you could count those up and you'll see that there are four. Four out of eight, which is effectively one half. Let's look at another problem. Now well, Leon sort of moved on a little bit. This time, he's going to roll a die and then toss a coin. Calculate the probability he rolls a four followed by a head. There's my two events. Rolling that die followed by tossing the coin. So, again, my two events, first one, rolling a die. I have six different outcomes here. They're all the different numbers on the die for the first event. Second event, tossing the coin, either a head or a tail. So, what will my sample space look like? Well, all the combinations, one followed by a head, one followed by a tail. 2 followed by a head, 2 followed by a tail, 3 followed by a head, 3 followed by a tail, all the way through. So, if I'm looking for the probability of a 4 followed by a head, I go through my list, my sample space, how many of those are four followed by a head? Well, there's one here. And how many events are in my sample space? If you count all those up, there are 12. So there you have it. The answer that I'm looking for is one twelfth. Just as a recap, We look at listing the outcomes of each event, connecting these up with branches to list our entire sample space. That is a list of all the possible outcomes. 
and then from that sample space we look for the sample space the particular outcome that we are interested in i hope this presentation has assisted you and until next time good maths